on. Um, and I promise you, I do not have it all figured out. Most days are chaos. I even planned to shower and look not like this for you guys for the call, but an afternoon adventure walk with the kids led to seeing the neighbors, which led to three hours, which then we got home. So, you know, that's kind of the flexibility that this job creates too, where I wasn't in a rush to have to get home and we could take our time. Um, and so much of that was what I was fighting for when I said yes to coaching. Um, and to kind of just like back up and give you guys a little bit about my story before I lead into, I've got four things that I want you guys uh, to really take away from what I share with you tonight. I'm sure none of them are probably things you've not heard before, um, but sometimes we can hear them from other people and maybe something clicks. Um, but I actually signed up for the business opportunity, which I think sometimes, even though I said yes to the business opportunity, I sometimes still shy away from thinking like other people might want that as well, um, for whatever reason. I mean, mine was two part. I loved the idea of leading my healthiest life and falling in love with fitness again as a former college athlete. It had been a while since I really had something I loved and showed up to. I still 10 years after I had graduated struggled to find my way with fitness where it wasn't just for results or for just for goals. I didn't know how to make life, fitness a lifestyle. Um, when you're a swimmer for 20 years and every time you show up to practice is truly for training for your next event, I translated that after graduation to training from half marathons. Um, or if I was, you know, doing in the gym, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no goals when I was in there. I was just punishing myself on cardio machines because I felt like, oh, I'm here. I should probably just like let the elliptical run away from me. And I hated it. It was so not joyful at all. And being a very social person, for me, that's like where I'd meet up with my friends. Like we'd go and we'd talk about our day. Um, but when I became a mom, I quickly realized that I no longer had time to go to the gym. And I know that some people that that slice of their life doesn't really change. But for me, it really did because my husband is a college swim coach and he leaves before 5 a.m. most days and he's not home until like after six most days. So going to the gym early in the mornings was never going to be an option. I was not going to go in the evening because I had so much mom guilt about the fact my son was already in daycare for I don't know, eight hours a day. So I just filled everybody else's buckets and mine was empty. Home fitness was not something I'd ever considered. Um, I knew nothing about it. I had never done a beach body program, had a protein shake or anything like that before I signed up and said yes. But what I did see was my upline coaches um, sharing about their fitness routine. They were also former swimmers. I had not connected or seen them in probably I don't know, 15 or some odd years. We grew up swimming together in New England. Um, but then I saw them sharing about these home fitness solutions. I saw their postpartum transformations. Uh, but more importantly, I really saw the growth environment they were part of. They were part of a team. They were having fun. And when Carrie posted her resignation letter from her teaching job, that's when it really clicked for me. And I thought, oh, she gets paid to post sweaty selfies? Like, I uh, could probably do that, you know? Like, I had no idea what they were doing. Carrie invited me for 15 months, and I was that person that didn't even answer or ask, tell me more. I closed every single message. But in those 15 months, what I was doing was leaning in a little bit more. Their posts were showing up on my page every single day, and I also, and I'm not even like an organized person, person in any way, shape, or form, but I had actually gone on and read the policies and procedures to find out how do you earn income. Um, network marketing was not something that I was familiar with. I was pretty sure my family was going to be like, that's icky and gross and you don't want to be part of that. But I got to this point where I needed a solution for fitness because I was tired of being tired. And I also was at a crossroads in my career where in t I was uh, working as a disability services coordinator at a university. So I was an administrator level role at a higher education, um, division one higher education. I was liaison to athletics department. You know, it was something that I always thought I wanted to do until I just felt really stuck until I asked for more and they said there is no more until I asked to make change and they said there'll be no change till I asked for more professional development and they said there's no funds in the budget. Um, there's no time for you to take and I just felt like I was put in this little box and as somebody who 
is such a go-getter and like needs to be challenged all the time. I'm an Enneagram seven and like, that's just who we are. Like it, we do not like to be bored at all. And when we get bored, it looks really ugly and lazy and lethargic and just like grumpy. And I found myself in that space paired with a son who I never saw. I saw one hour a day. Like all I wanted to do was be a mom. And I was like, and I get one hour a day with you. And then I'm so tired on the weekends trying to do all the things to get ready for Monday. I don't even feel like I get to enjoy that. So her posting that resignation letter just kind of really helped me be able to lean in and see, okay, I don't know what this could be for me, but maybe it could supplement my life, supplement my joy, give me more energy because I'd be taking care of myself. It would put me in a growth environment. It'd give me something else to set goals on. I couldn't change my day-to-day -day job at that point. We needed my income. Me not working was not an option, but I could maybe make progress towards creating flexibility in our lives. Like maybe I could cut back hours or maybe I could leave that job. I never envisioned myself as a stay at home mom, but I also didn't envision myself as the mom that only spent one hour a day with her son and didn't even like what she was doing. So I had to figure out a solution and Beachbody was, Beachbody was the vehicle for me. I went all in on this business. And I, what that means is I went all in on myself. I knew that if people were gonna take me serious, I had to take this seriously. I decided from day one that my physical transformation, and I didn't even join with weight loss needs, you guys. I was at my postpartum weight. I wouldn't say I was super strong and fit, but my friends had always seen me as the fit friend. Um, so I had to really think hard about how I was going to share this new role because I knew that if I shared, it was all about weight loss or like physical transformations, people would not, that wouldn't connect with me. So I shared about my energy levels. I shared about no longer needing to drink a pot of coffee a day. I talked about no longer needing to run to 7-Eleven at 3 p.m. because I can't keep my eyelids open. And then just picking up garbage snacks that just made me more tired in like this, this cycle. I couldn't talk about wanting to leave my job because I needed to keep my job. All I could talk about was how I was improving my life because I was taking care of myself. Rather than filling everybody else's cup, I was pouring my water first and then I had more to give to everybody else. And so I really thought hard about that. And so I always share that part of my story because so many times I think we don't really know, we know what our why is, but we're not really sure how to go about sharing it so it's really authentic to us because there's lots of ways we can share this. A lot of us will have a transformation, like a really strong physical transformation where, you know, it makes sense to share it in that lens. For me, it didn't really make sense to say, it wouldn't have seemed authentic if I shared in that lens that I was, you know, just trying to lose the rest of the baby weight. Cause really, honestly, I had no weight left to lose. I did lose weight by doing T25 and I did get into the best shape of my life, but my goal was never about that. I was happy in my skin. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't uncomfortable in my skin. And so I had to really be confident about finding that story, but it was that story where I realized when I first started, I thought, you know, my ideal customer is the former athlete. It's the intense person. It's, it's like the person that's like the goal getter. And while that, that yes, is still an ideal client of mine, my ideal client was the busy working mom that was clawing at anything, like gasping for air just to get through the day. And so my priority was to share tips and tools, free resources on how you can make dinner in 20 minutes or less. Like I would always post, uh, this was in the days of like the Facebook like page where that's really where I built my business. I would schedule a post. I'd have a 3 p.m. post that would go up and all it was was the ingredients for what I was eating for dinner for my family. And I thought about the busy working mom because I was her who you know, only had like this small window to get her kid at daycare before it closed. Shoot, I forgot to defrost the chicken. So what could I run into Kroger and grab in seven and a half minutes flat so I can still get to daycare before it closes? And that was the kinds of things I was sharing. I was just trying to make their lives a little easier, help them plan and prep. And so they had more energy. So if you had one hour a day with your kids, make it the best hour you had. I was yawning through the whole hour before I found Beachbody. And I was like, okay, if I only have one hour a day to give my son, he better get the best of me. And so when I started taking care of myself, that hour changed. I was alive. I was actually reading the words on the page rather than just moving my mouth and like rushing through that hour. That's what we found ourselves doing was like rushing through the hour so we could sit on the sofa because we were tired from a day that was just exhausting because it was boring. Not because I was on my feet all day and like active. I was just bored out of my mind. But Beachbody really flipped the script for me. It gave me something else to focus my energy on other than thinking about things I wasn't happy with. How could I change them? So 
I want to, I wanted to share that just as a segue into, I'm going to talk about four things because I know a lot of times in this business, it's like, okay, well, how do I find those builders and how do I get those people to like run with me? The first thing is you guys, it's not about finding builders. It's about creating leaders alongside of you because so many people don't necessarily understand the potential of this business until we show them, until we plant those seeds of success. And those seeds of success look different for everybody. And what my goals were with this business may not be your goals. And that's okay. You need to be so firmly rooted in what it is that you want from this and commit to that. Whether that is $100 a month or $200 a month or a thousand or a full-time income. You guys, there is no goal too small and there is no goal too big. You have to set those goals though, set those benchmarks for you. And so the race, it, like the, the way at which I was running the race, if you will, which it was not a competition. It was just, you know, for me setting goals for myself, um, didn't always jive with the pace of other people, but I couldn't worry about whether they could necessarily keep up. I was going and you're coming with me or you won't, or you weren't, but that didn't mean I forgot about you. It just meant that I was moving this direction. This is where we're going. And so here are some things that I, I still do to this day, but there are four things in which I really focused on in the beginning. And I don't necessarily know that I knew what I was doing when I was doing them, but I was just so excited that I wanted everybody to see the level of success that I was having because I believed in them probably more than they believed in themselves. And I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Like so many times we see our challengers or our coaches potential long before they actually see it. So we have to speak that into them. We have to encourage them and show them the way, because when we speak to them in that way, it's the same way as, as parents, right? Like when we speak to our children with confidence, they gain confidence. You find that balance between, you know, giving them the truths that they need to hear, but also lifting them up. It's no different in a role as a leader, you guys. If you're parents on here, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like it's the same level of language, obviously at a different probably scope because we're speaking to adults, not children, but parenting and coaching to me really are go together. You know, the way that I parent is the same way that I lead my leaders, you know, the clear expectations, um, but we're going together, right? Like I, I want to move with you. I don't want to get to the top of the mountain and stare down. I want to get to the mountain together. I want to all go there together. Um, so the first thing that really helped was involve them in discussions. So whether you have two coaches or you have 20 coaches, involve them in the discussions. And so in the beginning, I had message threads. I mean, this is before I even had a team page. I mean, I was only think I was a diamond coach yet, but I had a message thread, which was a great space for us just to connect and to talk about upcoming things. You know, hey guys, I'm running a shake challenge on the second Monday of the month. Here are the details. Here's what it entails. Anybody have a creative name we could call it this month? Because now I'm tapping into other people's strengths. Somebody may not be necessarily as bold to invite, but they might have that really creative brain and say, you know, let's call it fit for the fourth. Oh, what a good idea. Do I have anybody else that could make a graphic for that? You know, just lifting them up and giving everybody a space to contribute. I found that when people felt like they had a part in the decisions and a part in what was happening, they were more inclined to actually invite to it. So I just made sure that I was keeping everybody in the loop. Um, and again, you know, I know that these pods can get really noisy and I, I utilize them now, but I break them up into different spaces because I'm obviously not going to put my entire team into a message pod. It would be very distracting. But at the time when it was, you know, three, five, seven, 10, 12 coaches, and then they started to add their coaches. And I said, maybe we need a Facebook page, but then we just moved the conversations over there. I delegated out a lot of things. That was something that one of our uplines, Summer Tucker, taught me very early on. Delegate things that other people can do so that you can stay in the area you need to stay in. I was busy creating content for them or scripts or things that they could then use to invite. Who do I have that could open the group? Who can make the graphic for the banner? You know, it, it'd be easy for me just to take it all upon myself, but that didn't involve other people in it. So my first tip for you is involve them in the decisions. Um, and in the beginning, that's probably challenge groups, but think of all the pieces that are in that, you know, and like I just posted in my team page, you know, listen, I'm looking for five people to help me with our MBF launch group, five people, right? And some are obvious people that, it, that, that, offer their help, like they are always the helpers. And there's a few that are like, I'll do it. I'm a little nervous, but I don't know what to do. Great, now I get to lean in and mentor you a little bit too. 
The second thing is recognition. So I will say that this is not probably my strongest area because I'm not somebody that thrives or needs recognition, but it always feels good to receive it. And recognition can look different, guys. It doesn't have to just be what you think it being banners and boards, little things like little wins or big wins. I mean, no wins are actually that little, but, you know, starting with, you know, um, completing your first program, you know, scream that from the rooftop in your team page. Like they just completed their first program or, you know, we'd have women going back um, after maternity leave and we would just really celebrate them. Like, you know, I know it's going to be hard, but we're thinking about you, you know, you've got this and just checking in. And while that's not necessarily recognition, it's just that connection and that care piece. Um, but other things that you can really recognize is, you know, people that are like working to the last minute of the month, right? Like shout out their hustle. Talk about how they didn't give up and they worked through it, right? Also talk about people that maybe they fell a little short, but it didn't get them down and they kept working towards it, right? I just figured that whatever language I put out there was the language my team was going to strive towards. So water what you want to grow. What are the things that you want to grow with in your team? Use those as your recognition points. And don't just always make it about success club points, top and rollers, right? Because you've got people on your team that may never be the top success club point earners or the top and rollers. But that does not mean they are not very valuable members of your team. And it doesn't mean that they won't someday be your top SC point earner or your top enroller, right? So I would do um, shout outs for people that were showing up in the challenge groups and really cheering on people. You know, we've all got those discount coaches that, or maybe they're hobby coach, they're kind of in, they're kind of not, they're not really sure where to go, but they are like, you know, your front row at your spin class, you're teaching and they're always there at the front. They show up early, they get the first bikes, right? Like they are your your crowd. When you have team calls, they're always on your team calls. They're the first ones to log in. When you ask a question on the team page, they're one of the first people to answer it. I want to make sure that those people understand how valuable they are, even if they don't see themselves on a recognition board, such as Success Club, Rank Advancements, right? Because they, they will probably get there when the timing works or they gain the confidence in themselves that they need, but it always comes a little quicker when you really encourage them and let them know their role is just as important. So recognition is huge. Make sure that you're really dialing into that and choose a few things. You know, I mean, this can be something, some people are really great at this and other people like me, I have to, I don't wanna say work hard at it, but be really mindful of making sure I shout out people, but also knowing that I can't always see everything. So I'm doing my best to make sure that I'm speaking to the people that I wanna make sure that here, that I see them, I notice their hard work and I appreciate them. Um, the third thing is, you know, as you're building, and I know that a lot of people, like, they get to Diamond, and it can feel really lonely, like, you're kind of hanging there, and you're like, I don't know what my next steps are, I'm not really sure when my next coach is going to be ready to really run with me, you guys, that's a little normal, um, but again, you have to really move people, like, we can't just sit and wait for other people to really be ready, we have to take action on that, and figure out how we can create some momentum. And so for me, what I always did is this is something you guys should be doing too. When you're checking your downline, I want you to look at like, open up your entire, you know, sponsorship drill down and where are your top volume producers coming from? Because sometimes they weren't my PS coaches. They were coaches two or three levels deep as my organization was growing. And I wanted to make sure that they knew I saw them right? So I would send them a message. And so what I always do is when I run my reports and I always see, I always look at my top 10 volume people for the week. Um, sometimes it's the same people, but sometimes there's somebody and I'm like, who, who is that? Like, and now that my team is a little bigger and I've got my leaders running their own challenge groups, like I don't necessarily have a pulse on everybody. When I was a younger coach, I had a good pulse on who everybody was just because we were all like in a group together. But when I open that out and send a note, you guys, because you have to understand that when you reach out to them and they probably know who you are, or maybe they don't quite know. And they ask their coach, like, who's this Brooke girl, which I'm sure they know who Brooke is, but you know what I mean? Like, and you're like, Oh, well, that's our upline. And they're like, Oh, how does she know what I'm doing? Right. And just lift them up. Then they know they're being seen. But by doing that, you're also creating this conversation between probably your coach and then their coaches and which then they're like, Oh, she sees what I'm doing must be good. I should do more of that. So don't just leave it up to your diamonds to like 
figure it out or your builders to figure it out. You guys in the process, especially in building to elite that first year, I had message threads with all of my people working towards diamond and their people. And I, sometimes we were in a thread together cause we were in a push group, but other times it was a little more separate and I was looking and I was trying to speak life into them too, because I know sometimes when you're working towards that goal, you feel like maybe you're pulling or you're dragging or you're pushing and it doesn't always feel sometimes and that, maybe this is just me and I'm like, Oh, like, am I just wearing them out where I'm like, do you check your drill down today? Cause I can see they've got like flashing inactive coaches everywhere. Rather than that, it's me. Sometimes I'm like reaching down cause I know the girl, I see what she's been sharing. And I might just say, you know, Hey, I was doing my sponsorship drill down check. And I noticed you're going to be inactive this week. You know, just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to help you with your health and fitness goals. Because to me, if I see a coach inactive, it's not because I need them to order something. My concern is, are you okay? Like if you're inactive, you're not using your products, right? Like we, we, our business model doesn't require you to have inventory of anything, just the products you chose to use to keep you on your health and fit journey. So if I see you going inactive, my first thought is, whoa, what do you need? Are you plugged into a challenge group? What are your goals? You know, cause sometimes it's like a big life event that's going on and they didn't want to communicate it. Be there for people, ask the questions you know, be the servant, be the helper. And so reaching down and sometimes I'll have coaches say, well, it doesn't feel right to reach down to their coaches, coaches. We are a team. We're a team. This isn't me trying to like take your coaches. This is me trying to help the team, right? We all go up the mountain together. We all move that way. And so when we can all have a part of that and have a different voice, it helps. Okay, my fourth thing is create momentum together. So I already talked about having those conversations and involving people in challenge groups and all of that. But when you have those coaches you have that are working really hard towards Diamond, create a space where you guys can mastermind together. This could be a push group. This could be a growth group. It could be a book club. Make it something that connects you on a level just outside of the business. Because sometimes I find those, like a push group, while yes, it can be very valuable, sometimes that really speaks to certain personalities, right? Like I, for example, am somebody that hates push groups because I don't really like to be pushed. I am very self-driven. I'm very self-motivated. I mean, push groups were not a thing that were offered when I was a coach. There was no diamond groups or anything like that. I mean, I clearly, I really had no idea what I was doing, you guys, other than watching YouTube videos and just asking a million questions and trying to figure this out, but focused on just helping people and talking to as many people as I could every single day, whether it was on social media or where I was working or my neighbors, like just being interested in people. That was really what my focus was um, because I wanted to help them. And if I had a, a if I had a way that I could help them by a conversation that we had. And it might not have been directly at that moment. I mean, I didn't want to be the person that was like, oh, I hope she doesn't stop us because then she can try to sell us something. I wanted to just listen. And when the opportunity came to invite, I took advantage of that. And it was always done at a pace that, you know, I would call myself a little of a shy inviter too, but you want to build that relationship, right? And then they trust you. But so create the momentum together. So we've done things like, again, we've done like the, the push to Emerald calls, the push to Diamond calls. We've also sometimes, um, here's a great example for you. August is cup month. Um, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to pull out the people you want to do big things with in August. These may be your PS coaches or they may be a level deep. So my my most like memorable moments of cup month are not working with my PS coaches. It's working with their PS coaches. Cause I know when I help their PS coaches, guess what happens to that PS coach? They elevate in rank. Cause I helped them all rank advanced to Emerald. Some got to diamond and it was just, I use it as a mentorship opportunity. Of course, with their permission, I would ask my diamond, Hey, I'd really like to work with Brooke this month and cup month. Are you okay with that? And they go, like, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, but it was an opportunity for me to kind of take the person that's like just getting started. And this is where I used my rank reports and I would, or like volume reports. And I could see like those builders coming up a couple of different levels deep. Um, and I was like, Oh, who is this chick? Like, I don't even know who she is. Um, and it was an opportunity for me to really lean in with them. But in the beginning, it was all my PS coaches, right? Like I would choose 
Um, I do one for myself and one for my husband and I'd have an opportunity to work with um, eight people that month and really help them elevate their business and just set the standards. Listen, guys, we're going to run two challenge groups this month. We're going to run a free group. Like cut month can be an opportunity for you to really take your business and launch it. But again, using collaboration, really recognizing their efforts that are going on in there, um, you know, and reaching down as many levels as you might need to, because we know that your coach is advancing is really helping their coaches figure it out, right? Um, and so, though, I mean, momentum can look different in so many different ways, but really working collaboratively to do that because everybody wants to have ownership. I mean, when I don't have ownership in a project, I'm not as involved in it. So when you involve people into those groups or whatever you're doing, they're going to take it more seriously. They're going to invite to it because now you've put them on a banner and said, here's who's running our challenge group this month. You know, or maybe you shouted them out on social media and said, it's cut month. I'm collaborating with these four ladies and we're going to crush it. Here's our team name. Um, so now their friends have seen, oh, they're going to do big things this month, right? So they're going to take that seriously. Um, but those are my four tips that I have for you. I don't know if there's some questions. I don't know what's going on over the chat. Yeah, the chat is blowing up just with a lot of love vets and so many notes. Um, I don't think I saw any questions, but we usually this group has a lot of questions. So um, I'll just leave it open. Anyone have any questions right now for Courtney? I know I have a couple, but I'll let others go first. Nobody. Okay. Uh, I have a question right now, Courtney. Yes. Oh, now we have questions coming in. <laughs> How do you balance supporting your downline without overstepping your coaches? Do you always ask your coaches before contacting their downline? I, it kind of depends. So like if it's a situation with like inactive coaches, I do always talk to the upline first to like, you know, Hey, I'm going to, I'm just doing some drill down reports. Do you mind if I just reach out and check in? Or sometimes that coach has a really good pulse on what's going on, but then sometimes they're like, I don't know how to have that conversation. It's really awkward. And I was like, well, I'm happy to just check in. Cause it's never about, Hey, you're an active, figure it out and get active on Thursday. Like that's never going to be my conversation. And I think my coaches know that about me. It's always going to be people first and checking in on them. Um, but I also, again, like these are lessons that I learned from our uplines. We are a team. Like if my coaches feel threatened by me chatting with their downline coaches to help them elevate their business, which is going to help them, then that's a problem beyond like that, you know, that's a trust issue or something, which it's not about, we're not going to steal each other's coaches, you guys, like you're enrolled where you are enrolled. I want to help you because I'm really trying to help your sponsor, which then helps everybody else too. Um, but I do always let them know, Hey, listen, I work with the whole team and my team knows that. Like, if you have a question, reach out to me. Like, I will answer you. I'm a very available leader. Um, you know, obviously I balance my time and my business activities how I need to. And sometimes it takes me a little longer to get back than it used to when I was like a baby coach. But my team knows, like, guys, if you need something, please reach out and ask, you know, and I, I hope that I can be of help to you. I want to be accessible. I don't want to seem like, oh, she's just, you know, our star diamond upline, you know, like I want to be relevant. I want to be in the mix. I want to be working towards the goals with you. Okay. Next one systems for recognition, or is it more sporadic? I'm definitely a type B one organized person. Um, that's me. And I always joke and I'm like, listen, if I could get this far, like if you can see my desk right now, like if I could get this far with like really having very weak systems, incredibly disorganized. Those of you that are somewhat organized can probably go really far. Um, but I did really, I mean, that being said, you do need to have systems for yourself. Like when you're inviting, um, you know, how you do your follow-ups, your action hours. But for me, um, recognition. So I always do like SC boards at the end of the month and I always do top volume at the end of the month, but I do top volume every single week. So I recognize the top volume, top three volume producers for the week. Um, and it's really fun because those can change. And sometimes that's when I discover new rock stars in my downline. And I post those in the team page every Thursday. So I run those reports on Thursdays. Um, I do, I welcome all new coaches to our organization on Tuesdays. So I run a report of all the new coaches and I put them on a banner. That goes up on Tuesday, but I also recognize their sponsor. So on the banner is the name of the new coach and their sponsor. So then 
everybody's getting some love there. Um, but I also do, and again, these are obvious, like, and I'm talking about business metrics, um, like these things I have a system for, but so I always do SC by the 10th. I always make it, a, I tell my coaches, my business builders, you should be hitting success club by the 10th of the month. Um, and so I always do a, a for like a SE update on the 10th of the month. Um, and then I do one at the end of the month. If we're like really pushing for big goals, I might do a countdown where I actually run the report daily and update it. But that's, you know, it's, that's time and effort. And sometimes I just honestly don't have time with it, especially with my kids being home for the last how many ever months, right? So I've had to really focus on the things that I can do versus the things I used to do and don't have time for. Um, and then in terms of recognition, so Mondays are always my check-ins with my challengers. Fridays and Mondays are my challenger check-ins. Like the people that I enrolled in the last 30 days um, get a lot more of me. And then they go into like our fit community. And of course I still check in on them or they can check in with me. But those first 30 days are pretty critical. Um, and sometimes those are discount coaches that are in there too. So I'm making sure that when we're having conversations or we're talking about stats, you know, like, you know, please shout out Brooke, like she's two weeks into her program and this is what she's accomplished so far. And I will share those over on the team page or in the challenge group or wherever it makes the most sense. Um, but, you know, and then my Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays are my coach check-ins and I kind of just like split those up amongst how they make, like people that are pushing for big goals usually get me on Tuesday and then Wednesday is double checking and then Thursday is kind of more of my discount coaches. Um, but so, than any other things that I hear. And a lot of times they tell me, right? But they, if I don't ask, they wouldn't otherwise tell me, or sometimes I hear it through the grapevine and then I just make sure I put it in a place where everybody can see it. So that is a little more disorganized, but it's hard to necessarily like keep up with things. We do also do on our team calls, like as I run my team, um, our, we run our team separately, but we do our team calls together with my success partner, Lori Miggins. And so our, while we're doing housekeeping, the first like five minutes, we have them type in the chat, like they celebrate themselves, like some, a win for this week or recognize another coach on this call for a win this week. And so it's really fun to see that because then they start shouting each other out, um, whether it's um, a rank advancement or finishing a program or um, they bought their first house. I mean, it doesn't have to just be like business related, but we let them kind of fill up the feed and then they all really celebrate and chat with each other there. All right, Brittany has a really great question. What would you tell someone who is two coaches away from Diamond to really dig deep? That's Brittany's for two coaches away. She has a lot of discount coaches that I know could do this. So she just, she needs an emerald to pop. So what I had to really learn when I was building to diamond was that I can't make people do things, but all I can do is stay on offense. So what I would do is, you know, don't change your goal, revise your methods, continue inviting because the people you have right now, they'll be emerald eventually. But if we sit and we wait for them to be emerald, we sit and we wait. So keep sharing and inviting to this business opportunity. And I say this because when I think back to my, my first, my build to diamond, um, I saw their potential. Like some of them already had one coach enrolled and they weren't ready to sign their spouse or they signed their spouse and they didn't have another coach. And so rather than sitting and waiting for that to happen, I just stayed on offense and kept growing my team. And they did go emerald, but if I had waited for them to actually go emerald, rather than I'm going diamond in October, it might've taken me till February. So like we have to just continuously be building and growing our network and growing our team. Because again, those people will go Emerald, but sometimes it's on their clock, not yours. Um, and you have to always help them to the goals that they have for themselves, not necessarily the goals that you have for them which again was hard for me because I just assumed everybody wanted to run and was as enthusiastic about this as I was. And they were, but at a different level and a different scope and different noise, you know? So um, just, you know, you never know where that one lunch conversation could go or, you know, that one post you make that somebody has been watching and they're ready to go because, you know, the momentum comes from constantly bringing new people into your organization. You can't, you can't just stay at eight and just wait. Like we have to keep moving forward. And killing it, Courtney. And so go, so, so good. Um, I think that is the only other question I saw in the chat. I have two questions for you. I would love to know what PD recommendations you have right now. And then 
I always, I always want to hear people's big end of year scary pukel. So I um, just finished reading Girl on Fire, which I thought was really great. It's a workbook. So um, if it's something that you need to kind of like work through, it's great. One of my favorite all time PD books is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, and it's one that I revisit a lot with my team. It's, a, it's uh, I think I don't know if you know Elizabeth Gilbert, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, but she, we used to have these pod, not podcasts, um, it was like a success club in interviews. You'd earn access to these interviews with, you know, like, I think Rachel Hollis was one one time, but anyway, Elizabeth Gilbert was one. And her interview like changed my life. It was so, it just like smacked me in the face and like helped me really understand and put this all into perspective. And I wasn't a new coach at the time. It was probably maybe January of 2018 or January of 2020. I think it was 2018. And she talked about, um, and I just read Big Magic prior to this. So it was like, she was very relevant. She talks about just like leading your most creative life. Like in order to lead your most creative life, it comes from, you know, being confident and just being really firm and having a strong purpose, not a passion, a purpose. Your passion is only fueled when you have purpose. Passions can kind of come and go depending on the season. You have to have a purpose for why you're doing that. But so she talks about fear. And I always use this with my team because so many times my team will say, I'm afraid to invite. And she just puts it in her perspective. She goes, listen, fear is being chased in the woods by a bear. Like that shit's scary. Like when you have like nowhere to go, this bear can climb. He runs faster than you. Like that's scary. But the things that we deem as being afraid of are so silly. And usually on the other side of fear is our most creative moments. When we send those invites to people, when we take initiative on the things that, you know, like coaching, some people say, I was so afraid to coach. And then we're all like, oh, why didn't I do it sooner? Right? We were afraid, afraid of judgment from others, afraid of not, not afraid of, um, I don't know, not knowing to help. I mean, whatever those things are, we put in our brain. Right. Um, and she says, so fear Fear can come with you because we need to have fear with us because it keeps us safe. It allows for us to be cautious on our journey, to make good moral judgments, right? Um, but she says it cannot drive your minivan. You know, she's talking to a bunch of women. She's like, it cannot drive your minivan. It can sit in the back seat and make sure that you stay the course and you make smart choices and you don't let anybody in that minivan that's real shady. But like, it cannot drive your minivan. When it drives your minivan, you no longer have control and you don't get to lead your most creative life. And so now you're 85 years old and you're looking back thinking, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, I wish I had done these things. And so then I, like, after I read that book and she talked about fear in that way, it just like really flipped the script for me. And so it's something that I talk to my team a lot about when they say, oh, I'm afraid to this. And I was like, fear is the bear chasing you in the woods. Like <laughs> inviting your sister to join you to lead a healthy life, that is not scary. That is not scary. She might say no. It's okay. She'll still love you. She'll probably say yes eventually when she realizes, oh my gosh, this has changed your life. Like, why didn't I do this sooner? Right? Like, that's the way the story always goes. Um, but anyway, so that, those, that is like my, one of my favorite books because I just think it requires you to dig a little deeper. I love books like Rachel Hollis and I love You Are a Badass. But here's the thing. Those are just speaking like affirmations into you. But I need you guys to think deeper than that, right? Like, what are the things that are really holding you back? Because if we never ever make that leap from like figuring those out, we just stay the same. We stay small. We stay in our box. Life is good. It's not uncomfortable, but it's comfortable and you got to live in a little bit of discomfort. Um, so my big scary end of year goal, um, I have two really. Um, I as the numbers all work out, it's going to be a little close. So I'm really working on that, but we will enter the million club at the end of this year, um, which means that my team would have earned a million dollars in earnings over the last seven years, which is crazy. You guys, I left a teaching job that paid me $32,000 a year. Um, <clears throat> and while I didn't do this to earn a million dollars, it's pretty surreal. Like, I don't know if teachers probably ever earn a million dollars in like 30 years of teaching. Right. <laughs> so for seven years and just the fact that it's created so much flexibility. Like when I talk about freedom, I don't really talk about financial freedom because my husband's an educator too. We never imagined having an abundance of income. Like 
that was just not a life that we envisioned for ourselves, but we just knew we wanted more flexibility. You know, the ability to travel to see our family, the ability to do house projects that otherwise we probably couldn't have done. Um, but the flexibility and freedom of time, like time was so invaluable to me just to be able to say yes I want to be home during these hours. And if I want to hire a babysitter to come in a couple of hours a week, then that gave me freedom and flexibility. So, um, and the other thing, and that I feel like we've been working towards for the last like five years is 10 star diamond. Um, my second business center is four star diamond. My third business center is one star diamond. My husband's business center is a lifetime one star, but he had four diamonds on one leg. Um, so like in my build, I was placing, I've always built for volume and for income. That was how Carrie taught me. I was not chasing rank. So lifetime eight star in my first, which I bounce around between six and seven usually um, in my first business center. That for me was like, I don't, it was not, none of this business is luck. So I don't want to say that, but it just happened to be the correct placements because I really was just digging deep and planting people where I needed to get home to leave my job. Like I needed to focus on that first and foremost. So in that growth, people were kind of just all over the place. Um, and so when they went diamond, that's where they fell. And so our, you know, my income has obviously shown because of that rather than just chasing rank. So 10 star is still a goal for me, more so for my team, because I know it's something that they're hungry for. Um, and it makes sense for me now, finally, because my organization is deep and it's wide and adding people where I would need to add them to get there does make sense. So that's what we're working towards. That is awesome. Oh, goodness. Thank you so much, Courtney. You, I think everyone is just, we all took a lot of notes and we all have a lot to start implementing, which that's the whole goal of these calls is that we don't just sit here and just, oh, Courtney's so great. Like you gave us so many Good. tangible takeaways, which thank you so much. Cause I know you're busy mama. It's late. You're in the East Coast, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's all good though. I, <laughs> it's okay, guys. I mean, I feel like as a beach body coach, you know, these are, I built my business in these hours. I mean, this was, this was it. Yes. So we are so yeah, appreciative. This is where the magic happens, have, guys. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have any last questions for Courtney while we have her? It was all so, so incredible. So thank you so much, You're Courtney. You're welcome. Good Thanks luck with having me, guys. And so incredible on the Millions Club, like, goals. Thank right you. There. Well, we still have to make it happen, but yeah, you know, it's, such... it's on track to happen this year. So that's Ooh. what we're working towards. All right. Thank you, Courtney. See All you right, guys. Bye. Thank you.